Hello and welcome to another installment of the webinar series from Lean Focus. Today's topic is Resultware Kaizen 360 app, revolutionizing how you plan, execute, and monitor Kaizen events. In a moment, I will introduce you to today's panelist, but before we do, let's go over some housekeeping items. Next. Next slide. This presentation is proprietary information from Lean Focus. The participants today will be placed in listen only mode. And if you look at your display panel in the go to webinar display panel, you'll see a section called handouts 105. Inside of that display panel, you can download a PDF, which is an overview of today's topic, the Kaizen 360 app. Questions and answers will be handled at the end of today's webinar. You'll notice that there is a questions field in the GoToWebinar display panel. You can enter your questions there for the moderator, and I will be moderating those questions at the end of today's session, and we'll get to as many of those questions as possible. A recording of this webinar will be emailed to the email address that you use to register for today's webinar, and you should receive that one day after the conclusion of today's webinar. And if you do not receive that in your inbox, please check your spam folder to ensure that it did not go there. Next, a little bit about Lean Focus before we get into today's topic. Lean Focus is a management consultancy that focuses on building high performance cultures with our clients. And we do that through three primary levers or verticals, driven leaders, which are working with leaders inside of our clients' organizations that are driving the transformation culturally, that adopt these mindsets and behaviors in order for these culture to be sustainable. Guiding principles, which are the true north set of principles that shape the lean transformation journey and guide all the decision making and what we decide to do relative to the journey. And then systems and tools, one of which we'll talk about today that enable the execution of what the company is trying to accomplish relative to their lean journey as well. Next, we execute the initiatives across our clients through eight different practice areas, as you can see here on the slide. Today's presentation is actually part of the focus solutions practice area, which is tools and templates and these kinds of things that are used to drive the transformation journeys inside of our client. The panel, panelist or uh, presenter today is George Ellis, who I'll introduce you to in a second. He is the head of our innovation practice. So many of the tools that he's developing are squarely uh, centered around the, the types of processes in R&D and product management and innovation. Um, and you'll see how these apps that he's going to present today fit into that area as well. Next. Just a quick high level view of the types of clients that Lean Focus works with. It's a pretty broad and diverse set of companies and verticals ranging in size to Fortune 10 companies that are publicly traded all the way down to pre-funded or, or uh, pre-revenue VC funded uh, capital uh, types of companies, private equity, publicly held, family run businesses. The common ingredient here is that each one of these clients and businesses has leadership, which are the driven leaders we talked about earlier, that are really driving the cultural change inside of the organization and are on a journey and uh, are different stages of maturity in that lean journey as well. Next. The way we work with our clients is we help them to establish their version of a lean business system. This just happens to be the lean focus business system, which is comprised of a set of growth tools, a set of lean tools, a set of leadership tools, and what we call the foundational tools, which are 10 tools that are really function agnostic that we believe every function within a business should have some core understanding of and ability to implement inside their organizations to affect process improvement and deliver results. Uh, most of the work that George does fits into the growth system. However, the presentation today is going to be about Kaizen uh, 360, which is an application that we use to plan, manage, and execute the Kaizen event process, which is, you'll notice, a foundational tool 
inside the lean focus business system. So it's it's the structure by which the clients that we work with execute the Kaizen events inside their business in a sustainable manner. Next. So it's my great pleasure to introduce you to today's panelist, George Ellis. George, take it away. Well, thanks, Damon. And uh, thanks everybody for, for joining. Um, just a quick word, I, I, I spent um, um, a lot of years, uh, a couple of decades in, in, in uh, Danaher and in and, uh, working in learning how to and then creating transformation in innovation teams. So I was always in R&D. And I just fought constantly with the waste that um, we were getting from Excel sheets. Um, and I can tell you, I'm on, you know, I've been for more than 20 years now, um, trying to find our way around how, how is it we can create a system that is flexible and is right size for a business um, for, uh, and it allows us to uh, eliminate these, the, all, you know, just that we'll talk about a lot of it, the waste and um, uh, the waste in Kaizen's in this case, and we apply it in other, other places uh, as well. But I, I will say that I'm really excited to be with you today because after 20 years of working on solutions that most of them were pretty clunky and, you know, we just tried to, you know, giant Excel macros and uh, we, we finally have, you know, I think we have a solution to talk to you about today that isn't clunky, really does the work, and takes a lot of waste out so people can go get in Kaizans, get that work done that we really want to get done and spend less time fooling around with uh, you know, all of the all of the issues of data. So um, I'm excited about that and after uh, after these years of working in this area, uh, excited to be able to bring you a solution uh, to those to a solution to those issues. Um, so today, in today's uh, talk, we'll talk about what is the Kaizen 360 app, and then we'll very quickly go into talking about seven pain points. And then I want a short, just a very short discussion on the benefits of low code. I'm guessing the people on the call aren't too worried about what uh, about low code, but you're going to enjoy the benefits of the fact that we use what's called a low code solution from Microsoft. There are um, there. Uh, uh, they're uh, uh, through uh, power um, uh, through power apps power uh, the, uh, which is part of the power platform and I'm going to talk to you about some of the special benefits and this is a this is a revolution in code coming and so we'll just spend a moment on that and then we'll talk about next steps so first off what is Kaizen 360 what is the app um, so I want to begin with Kaizen events work uh, I just got out of one uh, I've been here uh, uh, for the, for the last few days on uh, in California, we just did a, a Kaizen event. You get people together, you get that creativity out of people. Um, you get the, you build that, you know, the esprit de corps. You 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 have this measure a measurement approach. You have a sustaining plan. I mean, it really works. And I and I don't think I'm telling you anything you don't know. It's pretty famous that Kaizans are impactful. Um, you can see here in these two photos, you know, we sort of have a team uh, uh, represented that's on a factory floor, but they work just as well in the office. And I used to, you know, I, uh, in, my, in my days when I was an R&D leader, we were holding a Kaizen every week or two, uh, some of them virtual, some of them in person, just constantly doing Kaizen. So I want to tell you guys, Kaizen's work, Kaizen 360 is about getting rid of the waste of managing that whole the whole funnel and the Kaizen process so we can get to the pictures you see on this screen and get the benefit of that. So let's let's dive in. Um, so it, if you want to have a successful Kaizen, you have to think about three different parts of the Kaizen. Uh, first off, there's before the event, all of the pre-work. And as you know, I've, I've, I'm sure I've led 100 Kaizans. Uh, and I can tell you the number one problem that we have is the pre-work isn't done. People forget about it. They think they're done. If you ask somebody, is it completed? They'll say yes. They'll say, yeah, that's in a that's in a folder. I'll get that to you. They forget to get it to you, or they do get it to you, and you look over, and it isn't quite right, but now the meeting's over. Just a lot of problems around getting pre-work completed. Because if the pre-work isn't completed, what happens is during the Kaizen, which this is such precious time, right? There, during the Kaizen, you're talking about three five days, maybe three, uh, you know, and, and just wasting two or three hours in this time slot is just so wasteful. If you could have, 
if you could have gotten something worked out in, ahead of time, it would have been so it would have been so much more valuable. The second problem that I have in kaizens, and you'll notice by the way, we're going to skip right past the kaizen because the kaizens themselves are not normally the problem. The problem is the before and the after. And so then, how are people actually sustaining the kaizen? How many of you have led kaizens and had the problem where you know, maybe for a week or two after the Kaizen, people do a few things off of what's called the newspaper, the, the leftover deliverables after the Kaizen event is completed. But how many people really do those 30, 60, 90 days sustainment events? How many people really celebrate the wins because they actually drive a metric in the right direction? How many people stick with it long enough to actually drive that metric? So Kaizen 360 is really, a, is, it really comes in two areas. The power of it is in the before and the after. And then as we'll talk a little bit later in managing a whole portfolio at one time. So what is the Kaizen 360 app? Uh, think of it as an Excel-like experience. So it's, um, it's made to look like Excel. And I, I don't know how much you can tell from that little photo. You'll see some other photo, you'll see some other screenshots coming up. But basically it's an Excel-like experience. You type directly in, you know, I'll say the cell. Um, you can, uh, so you edit directly in the cell. It's not a typical uh, da uh, database interface where you click to open the screen and then edit and close the screen. It feels like Excel. It looks like Excel. It's very intuitive for people who are used to Excel. Um, but there's a huge difference. The data is stored in your Microsoft 365 tenant. So if you're using uh, Microsoft uh, 365, uh, you have something called a tenant. That's where all of your data is kept. That's where your security is managed. That's where access is managed. Um, you have an IT department that's managing, uh, you know, ensuring that you have disaster recovery plans, you know, power generators uh, at, your, um, at your server site, all of that very complex infrastructure. This code sits on top of that. And that's, and that's you know, that's that benefit of low code I'm going to get to. But another benefit is, my, is that the the uh, power platform is device agnostic and so it's very easy to take an application running on a laptop and convert it to, to running on a phone or a tablet and so our applications uh, we we are able to uh, bring them to you in multiple formats um, again it still feels and looks like excel but it's uh, at all times that data is sitting in one place there are no shared folders there's no emails you have to go through to open to get the information so uh, the so that's the that's the point of the app or that's the structure of the app. Here's a charter. So here's a sample charter, and you can see it looks a lot like Excel. Uh, you're, there's, there, there are a few differences, uh, but what you'll notice is you're able to. We, we have a section. Uh, there's a header section that talks about who the who the owners are. Um, all of this is pulled directly off Teams, and I I didn't mention this in the last slide, but we run uh, as a we run the application as an app inside a Teams environment. So you can control access by controlling who has access to the team. They're able to come in, see the, see the charters, uh, and you're able to uh, see what the metrics are. Of course, these are all things that you have seen in other charters, I'm sure. You're able to pick out the team members. And of course, because we are working in Teams, we're, you know, we, we have some very cool uh, secondary features. For example, it's very easy to email people. Um, uh, you know, at the click of a button, we have a metric that we're able to track and you're going to see this metric come up again. Uh, so I want, so think about like, how do I sustain this? Do I have to go in and look at this document? And if you're an organization that has 10 or 20 or, or 50 Kaizans that might be running in a year, how do you do all that? And so we're going to talk more about that at the portfolio level coming up in a few moments. But now I want to get back to this um, uh, before the, the before. So what's the pre-work? And so what we ask people to do is just put in a simple listing of the pre-work and you're probably thinking, yeah, we do that all the time. And you're right, you do. This isn't that different from pre-work in an Excel uh, charter. What's, but wait a minute, I'll show you something that is quite different. Um, you know, a little bit more about the schedule. Um, what's the agenda that's going on in the event? And it makes it very easy for anyone, if you're managing a CI group um, or a continuous improvement group, or if you're managing a Kaizen funnel, it's very easy for you to come and see the current the current state of, of any um, given Kaizen. I'm sure if you if you have led a group where you've gone and tried to review multiple charters in one meeting, you've had the problem where people you they show something on screen and you say that doesn't look right, and they say, oh yeah, you're not looking at the updated version. I'll get you the updated version. That updated version never seems to come. 
Um, and you just it just winds up in putting a lot of friction in the process of ensuring that we're ready, which is to say, ensuring that the pre-work is diligent. I want to be able to see what pre-work is coming to the Kaizen and then see that we're actually completing it on time. So very powerful to have it in one place. Um, and uh, same thing with the deliverables. What are the things that we're going to be bringing? What are the things that the, uh, that the leadership of the organization wants to see come out of this Kaizen? Very simple in terms of how it's defined in the charter. Um, so these are all the different pieces. Why are we doing these things? And, and you know, the things I just went through with you for a moment, a moment ago. So it's a complete Kaizen charter. And so far, it looks a lot like Excel. But what's different is that I can now get comprehensive organizational views. I can, I can look at the dashboard of Kaizans that are coming. That's the top view. The second view is I can look at Kaizen ideas. So Kaizen's we haven't committed to, but are in the queue to come to, the, the, to, uh, come to fruition. Um, I can look at how I'm doing in terms of sustaining. Um, and, and then I can also look at how I'm doing in terms of my organization, who's participating and what, and what roles are they participating. And so because all of those Kaizen's, and imagine having 20 or 30 of those charters, imagine how likely you are to actually be able to go through and look at each one of those. Well, here we can give you a view at the organizational level. So uh, as I said, these are the these are the different views that we provide you uh, to look at your uh, to look at your Kaizans. So now you see an idea of what the app is. Let me go through seven pain points that you may be experiencing and see if this resonates with you. So um, uh, first, let me just take a moment and just talk about the problem tree. So in, anytime we talk about problems, we talk about symptoms. These are things that are obvious, but they're subjective. I'm tired. I have a headache. My stomach hurts. Then there's a problem, and that's what that's the trunk of the tree, and that's something measurable. And then finally, there's a root cause, and that's something that's hidden, but it's something we can treat. So when people talk about problems, they mix those three together a lot, and it's confusing. So the one thing we want to do during this uh, during this uh, discussion, and I would encourage you in any discussion, when you're talking about issues that you're having, be sure to divide the to divide to, to clearly delineate what's a symptom, what's a measurable problem, and what's a root cause, something hidden that we can treat. And I say hidden, you might say, why do I say that the causes are hidden? Because if the cause, cause was obvious, you'd just fix it. So most of what we deal with are hidden root causes. I mean, we're dealing with good people who wanna do the right thing. And so that's why root causes are hidden. We don't, we don't see them there, we just, but boy, we feel the symptoms. So let's talk about some symptoms that people feel in Kaizans. Um, you know, we failed, I already mentioned, we failed to complete the pre-work and the Kaizen goes forward. You, you guys know if, you're, if you've been part, parts of Kaizen, you know how it is. You show up on Monday, all that pre-work that was promised, you know, maybe 70% of it's done. You can't change your mind. The airplane tickets are paid for, the people are there. So what do you do? You go forward and you have a Kaizen that doesn't deliver nearly what it could because you didn't have the data ready, because you didn't have the right people ready to talk to what's going on, because you didn't have planning done for the activities that were necessary for the Kaizen to be a complete success. We lose track of our Kaizans during sustainment. I mentioned that one earlier. I haven't been part of an organization where that isn't a major problem. And so we do a Kaizen, we're excited. I come, we come back later and ask, you know, where is it? And uh, oh yeah, we got distracted, uh, we lost a resource. You know, there's a raft of excuses. I'm sure you've heard them all. Um, we fail to track our portfolio. Now, this is really an interesting one because I see it happening everywhere, but I see very few people recognizing it. And what I mean by that is if I went into a factory and I said, hey, product X, Y, Z, Z, Y, how many times did you ship it on time? Probably get an answer. How many times did I get a warranty return? I could probably get an answer. You know, when we have a product in a factory, and we're succeeding or failing, we measure it. Who does that with Kaizans? How many organizations can you go to and say, we ran 50 Kaizans this year, of them 30 hit the target and the, uh, and the sponsor was satisfied. Of those, of the 20 that we hit didn't, 15 are still in progress and five we had to stop, they didn't work. Why don't we know that? That's something we should know. Kaizans are tremendously, they're, they're expensive, they're valuable. Why don't we know which kinds of Kaizans are working, which aren't, and how we can get better? Another one, we lack clear, a clear picture of where the Kaizen activity is in the org. 
So maybe I have a Kaizen funnel. I can see their funnel Kaizen is coming. Maybe I don't even have that, but maybe I know. But you know, is the are all the business units participating? Um, am I getting the right number of Kaizans across the business? Okay, how many on the factory floor? How many am I doing that are in HR? How many are in innovation? How many are in finance or sales? You know, how do I look at the balance in my organization? A very hard thing to see in, a, in the typical Kaizen uh, funnel. Maybe you take a glance and have an idea, but you're not tracking it. And then finally, preparing for monthly Kaizen reviews is just so error prone. And this is the one that frustrates me, frustrated me the most, which is, I would say this cause is the one that drove me towards creating the Poto version of what I'm getting ready to show you. So years ago, I saw this as my major problem. I would show up, I wanted to go over 15 Kaizans. We had daily management on our Kaizen funnel, and I wanted to look at 15, take the three that were in, coming up and in trouble and work on them. It was so frustrating. We could never get through a discussion. We never had updated data. Once we implemented the, the concepts I'm getting ready to show you, we were able to go through our whole Kaizen funnel and we were able to manage, I'm going to estimate here, I don't, it's a hard thing to measure, but I would say we were able to measure three to five times as many Kaizans, really actively measure them because we had this tool. We were still able to do it in a 15 minute meeting or 30 minute meeting, excuse me, um, once a week. Um, so, but, but we were able to get so much more done in that half hour. So, um, you know, what's the problem? Kaizans just bring a fraction of the value that they could. And what are the root causes? Well, this is what I believe are the five root causes. There's not a single source of truth. People have their Kaizans. You know, you may have a shared folder, but then somebody makes a copy and puts it on their PC because I'm getting on an airplane and I'm going to update it, but then they don't remember to put the new updated copy back on the shared folder. Or another famous one is you put it in a shared folder, but oh, it turns out that's an R&D folder and people from marketing don't have access to that SharePoint directory. Uh, and there's a big deal with IT to make that happen. So there's just no single, there's no single source of truth. What's happening is, is uh, all around the organization and, and you know, st stuck in emails, folders, and, and in people's private PCs. There's no simple way to aggregate metrics to track that sustainment. This is the one I was talking about up here. How are, how are we doing with sustainment? And then how are we doing with our Kaizans actually hitting their targets? There's not an easy way to do that. Um, there's not a simple way to look at pre-work. I want to be able to look at a Kaizen. I want to know, I want to look at a Kaizen funnel, and I'm going to show you this. I want to know in five seconds, how is the pre-work for the Kaizans that are coming in the next three weeks? I want to know that in five seconds. I want to get a quick look at what we're doing for success or failure, um, because that's the way we can dive in and manage that, and, and because we need to know three weeks in advance to ensure that pre-work gets done. Uh, we can't look at overall success. Again, I mentioned that one here. And then we don't know how to track what people are, you know, what people are in Kaizen's. A lot of companies, it's the same people in Kaizen's again and again. It's the same parts of the organization where they have a real change agent, but we don't have a structured way to ensure that Kaizen's are moving across the org. So we're going to talk about those root causes. So I'm going to talk about seven pain points that result from those root causes. Unreliable charters, lackluster pre-work, anemic sustainment, opaque, organization performance, inconsistent Kaizen reviews, missing the participation view, and a murky Kaizen funnel. So those are the seven pain points I want to talk to you about. And hopefully, uh, if you've been involved with Kaizens, um, hopefully you'll identify with some, or honestly, I identify with every one of these. I've experienced every one of these seven. Uh, hopefully you guys aren't experiencing all of them, but, but if uh, those of you out there that are experiencing Kaizen, I'm sure you've seen these. So the first pain point is uh, you know, having a is having uh, charters hard to find. You know, do we have the right topic? Do we have the right team? Have we set, do we have it at the right time? How many Kaizans have I done when I got finished and I found out at the end that the sponsor didn't really agree with what was in the charter, but they didn't really get it, you know, they didn't, you know, get a chance to look at it. Um, and so we get to the end of the Kaizen and we find out that we were, we weren't completely up. I don't want to tell you we're going totally the wrong direction but we missed some important elements. And that's a frustrating thing to find out. So, you know, how, how do we, uh, you know, we, we wind up with these unreliable charters. They're stored in multiple places. They have, we don't know what the review cadence is. We, we don't have any way, you know, most charters don't let you see, uh, don't have a space for approval from the sponsor. You know, we do. I want the sponsor a couple of days before the Kaizen to check and say, yes, this is what I want. It really helps the process. Um, and so, so pain point number one, unreliable charters, stored all over the place, reviewed, 
not very, uh, um, uh, uh, we don't know. So the charter that you see here, it's the same charter for everybody. It sits in one place. The organization CI group can see them all. Um, there's no hidden factories. There's no, there's no way to make a copy of this and put it on your PC for that airplane ride that you're gonna forget to put, to uh, uh, reinstate it when you land. And, uh, and, and we're able to also, one of the small things we have here is, and then we use this, where's the champion sign off? So uh, if, 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 if we don't, or the, the person in leadership, where did they sign off? That's a question I'm always asking. I, I have a meeting coming up later today where we're gonna do just this. We're, gonna, we're meeting with a sponsor. I've been meeting with the team for weeks. We think we have it ready. We're going, you know, the Kaizen's next week. Well, I, we're gonna be able to put, we're gonna be able to say, we have champion sign off. Um, we're able to see exactly what is being planned for metric sustainment. And when you think about the 30, 60, 90 day rule of Kaizen sustainment, where do we expect to be? That's gonna give us something we can check off. And of course I can see the agenda, which allows me to come and look at the agenda and say, uh, you know, look at look at all the things I can look at in seconds. I can look at I can I can review the pre work. I can see it's all done. That makes me feel good. But I can also say, uh, yeah, but I don't understand where we got the voice of the customer in this. Uh, do we have any voice of the customer for this Kaizen? Um, and you can ask those kinds of questions that you normally can't ask. You know, the agenda. Did you guys include a? a for example, is there a tour of the factory so people who haven't seen the factory can go to Gemba? That gets left out all the time. And what deliverables are you really planning? Are these the things I want to see? Uh, again, I can make sure the team is balanced. You can see the whole story in one place. Uh, and then that's because you have a reliable charter. Again, if you had an Excel charter and that charter was always up to date, and you always knew where to find it and it was always easy to look at, you could get those same benefits. I just don't see that very often. The second one is lackluster pre-work. And so what you have is pre-work status hidden behind a word wall. So you see the event charter. I've really got to dig to find out what the pre-work is and is it really ready? Like, so on this page, the pre-work is actually sitting down here. It's a typical charter. So I have to scroll down. So think about it. There are 20 active Kaizans right now. Are you really, as a Kaizen leader, going to go open 20 files knowing, you know, not sure if they've really been updated or not, scroll through, find something, call the person, get their voicemail, you know, two days later, find out, oh, that was, data was out of date. The, it's all hidden behind a word wall. I wanna see something that brings the pre-work status right to my eyes. So, uh, so for, I wanna show you, this comes in two steps. First off, in the charter itself, there's a date when this should be done. And as you can see, this item isn't done. And in this, uh, in this example, the date is past April 1st. So this is late. So I think you can see in this charter, if you open this charter, your eye would go right to something's wrong. You'd see that red box. But even better, when you go look at the whole uh, pre-work, when you go look at your whole uh, Kaizen dashboard, we have a sign here in pre-work that says, hey, there's something wrong with the pre-work. So now you can look at your whole funnel. Imagine if this was 20 or 30 uh, Kaizans, uh, a little more than I can show on a page, but I could go see which ones have pre-work that's late. So think how cool that is. We start every meeting off by looking at the Kaizans in the order that they're getting ready to be done. And if there's anything near the top where the pre-work isn't done, that's right where the meeting goes. You can do that in seconds. You could spend an hour trying to figure that out. Here you can figure it out in five seconds. And then in terms of the deliverables, which are the things that have to be done after the Kaizen, same thing. Are people sustaining their deliverables? Remember, Kaizans have two types of sustainables. There's metrics you're driving through the Kaizen, and then there's specific tasks that often go into what's called a newspaper, or here I just call it deliverables, but it's the same thing as a newspaper. Um, you know, the things that didn't get done in the Kaizen. And I'm able to see, uh, you know, we're able to see a couple of things in these Kaizans. And if you look in this charter, I can just see in just a few seconds, this project has a problem with its pre-work, which it never finished because now it's having a problem with its deliverables. So obviously it's happened. This project, this Kaizen says they're uh, in planning. They don't have any deliverables. That dash means there's no deliverables. So in just a few seconds, I can check all my charters, all my charters that are coming. I can have them in order of occurrence. So I can look at them once coming up soon as first. And I can see, do you have any pre-work at all? And if you have any, is it late? So already I've got 70% of the information about what's going on and I can click in and drop into the charter and get the rest, but I get a whole lot of information just in the first three seconds of the meeting. 
you know, one of the things that happens here, if you're leading these kinds of meetings, let me tell you about a behavioral change that you'll see. Uh, when we, op we open up the meeting, we bring up this, this page and there's, uh, there's, there's a sign there that says the pre-work's behind. First thing I'm gonna say in the meeting is, why are we coming to this meeting with that highlighted? Please don't come to this meeting again with that highlighted, unless there's a serious issue we need to discuss. You guys know, nine out of 10 times, it's because people haven't updated, but don't waste meeting time with that. And you know, when someone shows up with a meeting and they, they can see, they know we're having a meeting on Kaizen's tomorrow, they know to take a quick look. I saw, I've watched it myself within three weeks, people learn to take a quick look a day ahead, and they just make sure that they've updated everything. So when we come to the meeting, we're ready because it's embarrassing when it's this clear that you don't have things ready. And that embarrassment leads to uh, personal behavior changes, which is having stuff up to date so that you have Kaizen charters that are review worthy. The third thing I wanna talk about is very similar, uh, you know, just on the other end, the anemic sustainment that we all see in the leftover deliverables or the newspaper. So you guys know you go into a Kaizen, you have a set of deliverables you want. It's very common, in fact, I would say almost all the time, something's left over that needs to be finished later. So that was a deliverable, maybe meant for the Kaizen. We saw some things that prevented us. We move it into the newspaper. But again, lost in a word wall. Are you really going to go look through all of those charters that you know are not updated and then ask people to update them and then go look at the updated version and all that takes a week? It's exhausting. But in the charter, same principle. It, our deliver, it's a deliverable during the Kaizen. It automatically flips to a newspaper after the Kaizen. We, and again, we have, we, as you guys can see, um, it's very clear inside the charter. You got, a red, you got a red box around a deliverable. You haven't delivered something on time. And again, it shows up over here. It's obvious in the dashboard. We already had this discussion. I, I included this in the discussion around pre-work and deliverables, but two of our biggest problems, just not knowing where we are, solved in seconds. Um, so, uh, and then the second thing is, remember I said there are two things you have to sustain. One of them are individual tasks or process updates. Uh, the second one is metrics. Hey, here's a Kaizen that we had a 30 and a 60 day check-in. There's a 90 day check-in that was due May 23rd, but it's blank. I can tell in seconds in the bowler view that people have not updated in time for their 90 day Kaizen review, which means they can see it too. Again don't show up with blank data. And so this helps, how many of you have been to a, 90, a 30, 60, 90 uh, a day review where people said, oh yeah, I just didn't get a chance to update it, it's okay. You know, that's such waste because now we have to go talk about it, then they have to go look on their computer to find the number and they can't quite find it and they need to contact somebody but that person's not available and we'll get to it later, which of course we probably don't. So here it's obvious, a day ahead, you better take a look. In fact, you know, what I used to do in the beginning was I would take these views, I would look at them the day, a day ahead of the meeting, and I would just send emails to everybody, hey guys, uh, you, you need to fill in this data because the meeting's tomorrow. It was so easy for me to manage that and have more, and as I, like I said, managing three to five more, more times as many Kaizans effectively because we made sure we were ready for the review. So when we look in the bowler view, this is in the charter itself, you see the pink, but when I look in the bowler view, I can look at all of my active Kaizans that are in sustainment, and I can see immediately, just in seconds, which ones have people not updated the data and where are they compared to the Kaizen goal. So the goal here was 20, at my 60 day review, I was at 45. Uh, I'm able to see as the reviews sign off, and here I can see, but you don't even have data. Why are we even talking? So the second one I want to talk about is opaque performance. So Kaizen impact, they're, they're, they're finding out what's going on with the Kaizen, it's like a treasure hunt. I know I've gone into organizations and said, you know, how many Kaizens have you guys done on your faith gate system? Oh, you know, we did one three months ago. We did one, I think, a year ago. Okay, how's it doing? You know, we did most of the stuff. I mean, did you complete it? You know, it's a treasure hunt. And now that data, which before was hard to find when the Kaizen was active, it's even harder to find because it's sitting on some, you know, it's sitting on somebody's computer or in somebody's head. Maybe they've changed roles in the organization. Maybe they're out for two weeks on vacation, whatever it is. If you try to go back and look at a Kaizen that's maybe six months, nine months ago, all of the problems I just described to you, they're even harder. So how do we have a, so how are we able to see performance? 
Well, I'm able to come and look at the bowler. I'm able to see which, uh, you know, again, look at the bowler. And I'm able to, in, in seconds, see which Kaizans are hitting their goals and which ones aren't. And this really enables me to track, you know, in this case, there's a lot of, there, 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 here's a whole Kaizen where people never even bothered to fill any data in for sustainment. Obviously, that's a pretty serious issue. Uh, but I'm able to look at all my Kaizans at once and I can sort them. I can look at them by business unit. I can look at them by the by the name of the, uh, by the type of the tool. I can look at them by the date they occurred over. It's not a treasure hunt anymore. I can find out what I want to know very quickly for powerful, uh, for powerful, uh, being able to, in a, a very powerful way, being able to look at six, nine, 12 months back, how are we doing and how can we get better? Oh, I just found out. 70% of our Kaizens that we did were TPIs. What, no three Ps? You guys aren't doing any, or what about standard work? You know, I'm able, to, I'm able to look at all those things and see which ones are failing and which ones are succeeding. So the second, the fifth, excuse me, the fifth point is inconsistent reviews. And I talked about this a little bit, doing the monthly review, the data's out of, the data's out of date, it winds up having obvious errors. And people become oblivious to the gaps. You know, if you, you know if you're not going to get in trouble, uh, and I say get in trouble, I mean that in the most positive way. If you're not going to get in any kind of trouble because your kaizen's out of date, because it's so chaotic as to what where kaizen's are, what's going to happen? Think of a factory. You know, uh, where you have a bunch of cells. Maybe you have 20 cells on a factory floor, and there's a light on every one of them. It's called a stack light or an ambient light. If they're all green and one goes red. I can go, I know exactly what the problem is, but when three quarters of them are red, what does it matter if another goes red? And that's that chaos that comes because we, because of the, the inconsistency of the data. And so here again, we're able to see gaps in seconds. We're able to see which Kaizen's are ready. And I think I've talked about this point already, but, but we can see what I call stop fix errors. Think of it this way. If you have a Kaizen without the pre-work that you should have had, think of that as you're going to get a quality gap. Your Kaizen is not going to accomplish what it could have. It's like a machine running with a defect, and you're just accepting it. Well, one of the principles of lean thinking is stop and fix. And here, we want to stop and fix these kinds of errors ahead of the Kaizen so we get a powerful, so we get a very effective um, uh, Kaizen. And you, as a Kaizen leader, if you're leading the CI group in your organization, you're able to see, you know, you shouldn't be seeing any of this sort of marker in anything coming up in the next month. And so you just have an instant view. So, put, uh, and then I've got pain point six here, murky funnel. So there's a funnel, there's somebody who's talked about having a Kaizen in four months, maybe somebody wrote a charter, it got emailed into a management review and we said we want to do it, but where is it? How can I look at funnels? How can I look at, pro at, at potential Kaizans separately from the Kaizans I'm committing to? And how do I know when a Kaizen is really shovel ready so that I can take it out, so that I can um, move it from idea into an actual Kaizen? So what we provide you here is the idea view. So you're able to separate your Kaizens into the Kaizens that are committed to and we're doing them. That's what we've been looking at so far. I can click this button and now I'm going to just see ideas. And all of these, as you can see, they're in the idea state. Um, and so when the, excuse me, when the idea in, in, the, in the idea state, we only expect a few things to be filled out. And once we've agreed, um, then as a, as a CI leader, you're able to flip this from an idea. So here's a very cool thing about this, this idea concept is anybody can come in and create a new Kaizen as an idea, but it needs a CI leader or somebody who is administering the Kaizen to say, yes, we're committed to that one. So that you're able to manage your, you're not having Kaizen's coming in that haven't been reviewed properly or not aligned, or not aligned with sponsors because only you can shift it as a leader, only you can shift it from an idea. So if someone goes over and says, give me a new Kaizen, they'll get it, but it'll be in the idea mode. And then they can go work on it, but we're not gonna start planning for it until we've decided as an organization to move it out of idea. So it gives you a lot of ability to control your portfolio. And then finally, no view of the participants in the Kaizen. You know, who in your group, who in your company is leading uh, is in change agents and who's falling behind? Who's always managing to just get out of a Kaizen uh, that where their group is needing it and they're not doing it versus who is finding new ways to apply lean thinking? And how do I split that across business units, across different functions? How can I look at people across tools? Uh, you know, I can look at all sorts of balance and that's the people view that you see here. 
So here's an example of the people view, and I can look at the Kaizans, I can change the dates that I wanna look, uh, look for, but I can look across people, I can sort it by people, I can sort it by, uh, I can uh, sort it by the, uh, by the tools, so I can look and see what kinds of tools we're running. I'm able to separate things out by where we are in the process. Is somebody in a Kaizen that's in prep for six months, but it never gets done? That's pretty different. And so uh, the, the ability to look at how individuals are doing allows me to do several things. One, it's recognize and reward those who are driving the business forward. Um, the second thing it lets me do is find places where there are gaps, where we need to be doing more. And those, as you guys know, if you're leading, if you're leading CI, you know it's hard to find those gaps. Uh, and so that's the, um, and that's the beauty of the, uh, um, the participation view. So when you look at these seven pain points that I went through before, what are our solutions? You know, unreliable charters, single source of truth. Lackluster pre-work, a five second view of pre-work across the org. Anemic sustainment, same thing. Opaque organizational performance, I can look at a Kaizen event history that persists for years. Uh, inconsistent Kaizen reviews, very easy to spot and to, and to direct people to stop and fix, fix defects before they uh, affect the Kaizen in a serious negative way. Murky funnel, separate funnel view, still single point of truth, uh, but a very simple view. And I, I didn't include a screenshot of the funnel, but the funnel, a funnel view only has about a fourth of the information of the full charter, just enough to where we can say this is worth doing. So it's a very light touch, allows people to put their ideas in very quickly and get help before we decide that we're gonna do it. And then I don't have a participation view, but I have the Kaizen participation view. So I wanted to just take one moment, I said this earlier and I talked about a little bit, the benefits of low code. You might think this is gonna be boring um, because if you're not a coder, you might think this doesn't sound that relevant. And also low code, not exactly the most exciting term. I have to admit, if it was up to me, I would, I would have told the team, could you find something a little more exciting than low code as a name? But it's a very cool concept. It's coming, it's going to affect your organization in lots of ways, not just in your Kaizen app. But the benefit of a, of a low code, uh, the way we are using low code is the infrastructure is already built. So you don't have to connect to another server, or open up a firewall, you don't have to bring in soft. You don't have to uh, bring in software updates separately. Uh, you don't have to go through some sort of a, a you know that have to be checked for security. You don't have to do an audit. Uh, well, you have to do an audit, but I'm going to tell you the audit's the easiest audit I've ever done in my life. I had to do a one of one company had me do an IT audit for a, a low code app. It was 15 minutes, six pages long. Took me 15 minutes. You know why? Because five of the pages were not applicable. Now, any of you that have gone out and tried to get a Kaizen app installed on your system, I'll, I'll, I'm willing to wager that your IT group has had a lot of hurdles for you to jump. Um, what's their disaster recovery plan? Because our data is sitting on their server. How do I know that they're not breached? What do they do when the data is breached? None of those issues come up when you're in, uh, when you're in the low-code solution because all of it sits on your infrastructure. It's just part of your team's infrastructure. It sits in your Azure data. No, even lean focus can't get to it. It's your data. You fully own it. And so when I look at SaaS applications for Kaizans, you know, you, you, know, you wind up having data storage issues. You know, I don't want to have my data at some company, and maybe I've never even heard of this company because the people who make Kaizen apps are not large companies. I don't have them already. I've got to go get a whole new supplier. Well, in this case, it's fully secure because this app fully sits on your infrastructure. Access and security, I've got to go through, I've got to have IT, have a process. You guys know that, you guys know the drill here. I, I want to get a new person to use this external app. Now I have to go to IT who manages the licenses, who has to make sure that we're using all the licenses we have so we don't get a new one and have to pay for it for no reason. Um, and you're, in the case of, uh, in the case of result where you're on Teams, you, Open up a team, put the app in Teams. There's access. You don't even need to, you don't even need IT to do this. Disaster recovery. If my data is sitting on somebody's server, I need to know what's going to happen if they have an experience of flood or a power outage. Well, this just sits on your business. Nothing to deal with. Adding new users. I just talked about that a moment ago. You control the access. You build the team. You're the owner. You decide who can come in. That's a wonderful thing about Teams is that ability for individuals to control access. It's a much simpler um, security system. And also, there's no possibility of letting somebody in from outside the organization. IT protects that. 
and ensures what the level of access is for anybody outside the org so it's safe. Um, ability to customize. When you go to a third party, either it's hard to customize or it's very expensive and then you're out on some strange branch of software. Well, with a result where you own the software, you have the opportunity of updating it yourself. And you guys are going to say, uh, I'm, uh, you know, I see it more and more. Two years ago, I almost met nobody that heard of uh, uh, Power Platform. Now, I would say one in five IT departments I talk to are using it. In two or three years, it's going to be half. Um, and so you can own the source code. That's one of the things when we sell it to you, it's a one time license fee. There's no renewal. There, and because you're using it in Teams, there's no license paid to. Uh, there's no additional license paid to uh, uh, Microsoft. In other words, your team is already licensed to use it once you've purchased the one time, once you've made the one time uh, purchase. So, do you find this interesting? Is this something that you'd like to look into more? And so, here are some next steps. So, first, you can download, there's a little one page here that just gives you a, you know, a simple sheet that you can uh, perhaps talk with your colleagues about it. Um, we can do a demo for you uh, that uh, goes into more detail as well. Um, uh, in terms of our uh, in terms of our offering, we have a one-time license fee. Uh, uh, we also uh, we we also know that that you may want to try the application out. So we have a trial. Uh, it takes a, it's a little bit of work for us, so there's a modest cost to us. But we can set an entire Kaizen structure up on our tenant. We can give you and up to ten people full access to it, so you can try it and see if it's something that works for you. Um, and then the other thing we offer is a maintenance contract. If you would like us to help you maintain the code, it's fine. Um, if your IT group is ready and able to support uh, to support Power Apps, you have all the source code, you have all of our documentation, you have full rights to go modify that code. And the other option you have is if you think there's a better way, you want to find a third party because you want to make enough changes to where uh, it doesn't make sense to work through us. You, you, maybe you have a third party that already has that capability. That's no problem either. So you have three options for keeping your code up to date and maintaining it. Um, and so, uh, and then finally, well, right now uh, we have one more slot left in our um, uh, Kaizen beta program. And in the beta program, uh, we offer a 25% discount on the one-time license fee. And we collaborate with you during deployment, which means we're watching, we're helping, we're making sure things go well. So that's what you get. What we ask in exchange for that discount and the collaboration is that you complete your evaluation within two months, uh, that you grant us temporary access to your, to your Kaizen team. And what that means is uh, maybe you can do it, uh, maybe IT can do it, but you can give us guest access. So we're able to just go see how it's working for you and we're able to inspect your results. Um, and then finally, you allow us to share your experiences with other clients uh, and potential clients as a state, as a case study. So that's the beta, that's, that's the beta um, what you get, and this is the beta what we ask in exchange for that. So those are the, the you know, that's the opportunity with the beta program. Um, if you guys would like to see more webinars, um, I'm doing right now just for innovation and resultware, I'm doing one to two uh, webinars a month. And you guys are certainly welcome to go take a look at these. You can go get all past uh, webinars. We provide uh, recording uh, links for them. Um, just go to this site and sign up. And you can also get Kaizen. You can also get webinars on any topic, not uh, in lean thinking, not just uh, innovation, but we have on the factory floor, on leadership. Uh, uh, you can go uh, watch. Uh, there's a very there's a new series that we're doing called Lean Catalyst, where we're where it's really focused very much on talking with top lean leaders uh, in industry and uh, a very interesting show. Uh, almost I say show. It's a it's almost like a show. It's like a, a um, an, an interview uh, uh, between Damon and a leader. Uh, you guys, there's a whole gamut of things that you can get at through the website. So um, with that, uh, let, me, uh, let me stop and see if there are any questions that you guys have. Thanks, George. Just a reminder to the people that are on the presentation, there is a questions panel in the GoToWebinar display panel. You can enter your questions there for George and I will moderate those questions. So George, we have several questions entered already and I will fire them off to you, you ready? I am. Okay, first question, does this run on a Mac? Yes, it does. It, yeah, the, the uh, so yeah, all the, so yeah, Teams uh, applications run on 
uh, phones, tablets, Macs, PCs. And, and on the PC uh, and Mac, there's a, uh, you can run them on the downloadable um, Teams app, and you can also have a different experience if you run them on the web version. So there's two ways to get to those. Okay, thank you. Uh, next question, George. There's a lot more to a Kaizen event than what's in a Kaizen charter. How do I connect all of this to my Kaizen data? Oh yeah, I should have mentioned that. Sorry about that. Um, I think the easiest thing to be, let me just pull that page up. So we have a, we have a simple way to connect because it's a great point. There's a ton of data in a Kaizen, in, in a Kaizen that's well beyond the charter. And it's usually hidden uh, from people who want to see it, uh, from people who are outside the Kaizen team. So let me see if this one works. Excuse me, I just need, I will need to uh, do this. And hopefully it's up on slide 21. So it's, let me see if I can get that to view. And that's, oops, sorry, let me try one more time. Sorry about my email there, my calendar is not the prettiest. And let me see if I can get that slide 21. There we go. And so, um, Damon, we have a couple of ways. First off, you should have a ton of data in your Kaizen, uh, right? You're going to be, going, you might be getting data from customers, from the factory, whatever it is. You might, you might have problem solves that have been attempted in this area where you want to get that information. Um, there might be analysis where you're going and benchmarking what's going on outside. You might have uh, information on new technologies that are coming, or you might have suppliers that maybe you're looking at tools and you have potential suppliers of a tool, whatever it is you can have a ton of information that goes into a Kaizen. And so the first thing we recommend is go set up a team for your chart, for your Kaizen. Uh, and it doesn't have to be on the same team as the charter, but you can set up a team and all of that data should be there. We recommend this for a couple of reasons, Damon. One of them is just because you can come back six, nine, 12 months later and find that data when it is a team versus when people use just a shared folder and SharePoint. Those things are so hard to find six or nine months later. Um, and the cool thing is right here, I can link to it. So all I have to do is go to whatever that team is I've picked and I can put a link in here and that link then um, allows me to connect. And if I just click on this little icon, it will take whoever is looking at this charter and in one click, they can go see it. So that tells me something first off, when I come into a charter and this is blank, that box will be pink. And the first thing I'm going to say is, where's your data? Where are you keeping things? I'm going to know that three weeks before the Kaizen if people have set up a place. I have three or four weeks, you know, plenty of time to get things set up and ready for the Kaizen versus have you guys know this, know the deal. People show up, they show stuff on their computer. Nobody else can find it. Um, and the second thing is that we have a report out. Now, we have another link to the report out because we want to make sure people can easily click to the report out, report out. Same idea, probably this report out is sitting somewhere in all these files. But the idea is we don't want, you may have, you know, by the time you're done with the Kaizen, you may have a relatively complex file um, uh, structure. So we want someone to be able to find the report out in a single click. So we have these two ways, Damon, to be able to collect, to connect back into um, lots of other data that affect the chart, that affect the Kaizen. Great, thank you, George. Uh, George, based on your prior experience in implementing these with our clients, how much training would you estimate is required for people to, to get up to speed on using the app to where they're operational, self-sustaining? Yeah, that's a good question. That's, that's an interesting question because I think it varies a little bit. Um, if I think about like somebody who is running, they want to run a Kaizen and they just want to, and all they want to do is just be filling in the data, like what you see on screen. Um, so basically what, what you're saying is going from an Excel sheet to this, it's almost zero. I've, I mean, like I said, these are, you know, you type directly in the cells, you can see the pull downs. It's pretty straightforward. There's not really a lot to explain. I think people know what done means. They, when they see a red bar, it's pretty intuitive. So I think if you're a Kaizen leader or if you're a Kaizen participant, I would say it's close to zero. Now, if you're a CI leader, and you want to be able to go look at like, how do I pull up? Uh, I want to look at like, uh, how, how is the engineering group doing uh, in Kansas City? 
and how do I get that report? You know, that would probably take us a half an hour to walk through how we do the filtering. So I, you know, I would say just looking at those views. You remember, you remember earlier there were four there were four views at the uh, portfolio level. They were the the Kaizans, the ideas, the bowlers of sustainment, and the uh, people activity. And so I would say there's probably 30 to 60 minutes of going through that and 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 structurally applying it in your org. I mean, to go and look at the page, that's easy. But how do I build that into the daily management of my Kaizans? How do I build that into the monthly reviews that maybe my boss wants to see um, uh, at, at some sort of a business review meeting each month? You know, I would say probably an hour. Uh, next question, George. If, if somebody already has a Kaizen funnel, let's say it's an Excel and they've got Kaizen's teed up, Kaizen's that they've been sustaining and, and things like this, is it possible that we could take that data and put it into this app for them if they were to to purchase the app yeah yeah absolutely uh, we have a um yeah we do have a team that supports us um, um so in terms of uh, so we have we have a partner that that has professional programmers professional testers that uh supports lean focus and they are there and they're and, and it's it's a for a perfectly reasonable cost, we're able to lift data out of existing charters and copy it over. You know, you would have to allow us uh, two or three days to get that done for you, and that would be a, a pretty modest charge um, that we would be able to do that for somebody because it's just a couple of hours to copy it over. And we're able to, you know, you could go and copy it in cell by cell into the charter. That's one way to do it. Uh, but the people we have who who are actually able to get to the data tables could probably do that a little bit faster for you. So we're happy to do that for you or um, to, to make that transition easy. Right. Uh, you mentioned earlier about how the Kaizen app doesn't um, or is set up so that people don't keep a private copy on their own PC. Can't people actually keep a copy of the charter from the app? How does that work? Uh, yeah, there's no way. You cannot make a copy of it. It's, it's, it would be like a typical app. You could take a screenshot like what I did here um if you you know uh, but in terms of actually being able to feel like uh, like a, with a regular excel charter where i say i'm gonna i'm gonna go get it and oh don't worry when i land i'll put it back how often does that happen if it happens 20 percent of the time i'd be amazed but um yeah in this case that you can capture a screenshot but there's there's no way to capture any kind of a working copy here if you're not connected um, and if you're on an airplane, hey, spring for the eight bucks, connect into your teams uh, on while you're on the plane. Uh, and you'll for eight bucks, you'll have, uh, or that's what I pay anyway on my airline. Um, you'll have full access uh, on the airplane. I've done lots of work on teams from the plane. It, it, it works just fine. So the need to do that has gone way down, but the ability to do it is completely gone. And just to reiterate, that's We've done it that way on purpose to solve the problem you talked about earlier, which is there are multiple copies of the charter and nobody knows which one is the most up-to-date version. Oh, you can't stop it. And I will be with people, Damon, and I'll, I'll be with people who are working in a charter and, and I'll say, you know, listen, we want a single point of truth, work here. And they will just, you know, they will just say, well, you know, I'm very busy and this is a harder way for me. So I'm gonna do this my way. Don't worry, I'll fix it later. I mean, it's like you could be sitting there right with somebody and explain why not, why you should not do that. It doesn't help. They they do it anyway. Yeah. Uh, maybe one more question. Does does this app support non-operational Kaizen events? So Kaizens that are in the back office, customer support, sales, and so on. Absolutely. Yeah. No. We we used you know um, we use the same you know this this charter. By the way, this this the, the charter and the concept of charter. Let's throw a parade for it. It's an it's an amazing idea. I mean, the charter concept, not not just the not just the result wear version of it. But the fact is, I've prepared for P themas. I've uh, I've prepared for uh, phase gate reviews. I've prepared for project uh, project scheduling events. Um, and I've watched this be used on the factory floor. I've used this in HR. I've used this form in finance. This form covers the gamut. It is really, it really does work for a Kaizen, no matter, as far as, as far as I know, I've never seen a case where this form didn't do a great job helping us prepare and run and sustain a Kaizen. All right. Thank you, George. As usual, learned a lot, and it was a very informative webinar. Thank you all for participating. As I mentioned at the beginning of today's session, 
This webinar will be recorded and you should receive an email about one day later to your inbox. Thank you all for participating and I hope you have a great rest of your day and a great rest of your week. Bye now. Thanks everybody, bye.